Hi guys, I'm Brett from Hearns Hobbies. And I'm BJ. And today we are doing part one of the all new 40 year old classic re-release Yokomo Super Dog Fighter. Super Dog Fighter 870C. C so, is for Charlie. Is it now? I don't know what C is for. What's the C for? Carbon. I don't know. You don't know? Come on, you should know that. That's the sort of information our old Yoko Yoko bro should know. You see, I don't know actually. There you go. But we've already done an open boxing, right? We have. So, so what are we doing now? We've stolen the thunder. We're going to build it. We're going to build the sucker. Okay. Let's get it so done. So let's. Oh, look at this. So we've got the addendum here. The what? Look like Brundle fly. Okay. I don't know what Brundle fly is. Oh, well, you have to watch the fly. Then you'll get it. So we've got our addendum here, which is just um, a correction on what Ooh. screws to use and such in the manual. So we'll keep that handy. And then we get our manual here. I endeavour not to use the L-shaped Allen keys in the kit. No. I mean, if you want the, the sort of retro feel. I'm not saying that I won't. I'm just saying that I really try not to. Fair enough. Well, we've got our full tool set there anyway. Nine so let's steps, keep that of course. Over here. Classic nine steps. All right, I'm going to be the navigator, apparently. So I'm going to be driving... All right. What? All right. So here, well, here's all the recommended tools. So we've got all that ready. I got a chassis. All right. Here's part one. Part here we one. go. Where is my nine steps toolkit? Do you know why I like to use these nine steps toolkits? What? The beautiful knurling. Feels good, doesn't it? They have a really nice knurl on them. Yeah. Good control. Good in the hand. Nice cap. All right. So on this side, it's telling us what bits we're going to need for this start. We need the chassis. Chassois. And we need uh, bag one, which is... And this is fibre reinforced plastic, this one. It's not carbon fibre. Mm. Super stiff. I don't think it's going to need any prep. I wouldn't go as far as gluing it or anything no, like that. No, I wouldn't worry about that. Not like the original one, where wow. you had to sand it all down. Look at these cast we'll get our aluminium front bulkheads. And rear. Can I please have some screws, good sir? Can do. And I'm working over the... Uh, which ones are we going to need? Yeah, you can be in charge of the... The chop chop. The sharpy sharp cut cut. You know I'm not allowed that. Oh, you were using it before. Yeah, and that was a great effect. Let's put that one there. And I reckon these are the countersunk screws you're going to be needing. Countersunk? Yep. So we've got some Loctite. I have got a little bit of Loctite. Does it recommend any Loctite? It does not. It does not. I'm just going to go on a But Loctite here. is definitely recommended. Well, we're recommending it. Because I'm pretty sure when I first built mine, I didn't know about Loctite and never used Loctite. But the original one also had a rubber gasket on the bottom here. It was like a, a dust seal. Really? Yeah. And I think that had to do with um, how it sat on the chassis because the, cast, the castings would have um, like dug in. Of course. But everyone pretty much threw away those. Did they? Yeah, the rubber um, gaskets anyway. We're not you, throwing you to anything on, away. Um, Silicon? No, it was contact cement. They recommended. What? You had to glue it on? Yeah. So you're meant to glue it on these sections and then it gets screwed in. But we don't, mm. we don't do that for this one. I don't have to glue it on, do no. I? No. I don't want to glue it on. No. Okay, so this is where we need our addendum. Why? Because We're addending it already. Yeah. So let's do so two screws in the front end. They don't do the front ones because I'm pretty sure the bumper. bumper bumper screws go through there, right? So Rick, let's see. So the front one would be this one. How do you know? Because it's the same length here. The rear one has actually got a long, longer section here and, and uh, thicker yeah. ears. Longer dunga. Longer dunga. Okay. So there's the front one. Front one. So where's the front? And two screws, please, good and sir. And the screws are three by eight. Oh, classic. And these are all hex headed screws, which I'm really pleased about. Three by eights. Which ones are three by eights? And there's even a little thing here that says. Three by eights. These are three by eights. They're the ones. All right, so there you got go. that. It's going to be a long build, and guys. That. Strap yourself in. I'm going to and use then... a little bit of Loctite, and that's just so I don't have to reef on everything really, really hard. Is so that looks okay? It like. 3x6s, 3x8s. Okay, so 3x6s, which are the really short ones, they're for the motor mount. Oh, that feels really nice. Where's the other one? Now, yeah. you do want to be careful with this cast. I'm going to go out there. This cast alloy is not going to be. Oh, hang on. I think I gave you the wrong ones. What do you mean? They're meant We've to just be 3x8s on the front. You've given me three by eights. Did I? Yeah, you measured them. Oh, did I? Okay, well, you're good then. Yeah. Yes. Three by eights. Yes. That's what you measured. Now I need a three by six. Have you built an RC kit lately, Beach? No. Okay. 
Oh, this is good. And the rear one, three by well, six. Well, it's saying to use two three by sixes, but I reckon the three by six you only need on the front because they're shorty. Yeah, well, maybe it's not going all the way through. Do you know what I mean? And I would suggest three by eight for the um, for the back one. For the back one. How many holes are there? There's three Because it's saying to use three by three by six here and a three by six there. Yeah, I would tend to agree with that. So that's a three by six, that short one there. Yeah. But that's the only one I've got. Well, that's okay because there's only one hole in the chassis. Is there? So they must have, they must have modified it later. How about we put this bit on first? No, you got this the wrong way around. What do you mean? Hang on, can't be. What have I done wrong here? Oh, it's this way around, sorry. That way, you silly duffer. I'm a duffer. So which one do you want me to put first? Hang on, hang on. Three by sixes. That'll be a three by four then, or a three by three. Because that looks really sh that's short, three by doesn't six. it? You sure? Yeah, not sure. But it's not a countersunk. Come on, Beige. We're only one screw in and we're having dramas. Well, I reckon. So what do you that? reckon? Is that, the, is that the one you gave back? Yep. Giving it back. All right. So I reckon try and screw these two in. Into where? Into the motor mount. Into here and here. No, that's not countersunk. Yes, no, they're not countersunk. Oh, they're not countersunk. They must go through. Oh, okay. They must. Oh, is that why they're saying um, button head? Because they're. Oh my lord! This is going to take a while, peeps. Oh, here you go. The button head ones, because they're going to hold on. The under tray. There you yeah. Go. Yeah. They're going to hold on the under tray. Yep. So we don't put the under tray on now. No. We'll put it on after. Yep. I'm not going to lock tight this now then. Okay. Is that okay with you? That's all right. So button heads. There we go. Look at that. They're just holding in place for the moment. Yeah. They're just going to come out again. I need another one for here. Or oh, does that get held in too? Really, that gets held in too by the under tray. Well, the, the screws, the screws are actually just this and this one, but it doesn't matter. You only need two screws to hold in there for the moment. Yeah, but it's the whole motor mount. Yeah, that's kind of sunk, isn't it? Yeah. So once we unscrew those, this will hold it in place in the... Uh... Yeah, but I'm just saying at final assembly... Yes. It, these go through the... You definitely want to be Loctite in that, because you can't do that up tight on the polycarbonate. In the past, the original one only had the back screw holding on the, um, the under tray. Oh. But it looks like they've they put more screws in there Beefed for the up. under tray. Yeah. There's no, nobody wants a flapping under tray. Obviously not. We've... All right, so now we've got the rear gearbox um, bulkhead. Yep. And that's three by eights. Three by eights. Give it, chuck us four of them. Am I putting four of them on or what? Four of them. Is it definitely four? I'm, I'm beginning to not trust you. Why not? I don't know. You can trust me. I'm a doctor. Got no experience, but I'll have a look. I know. No worries, Harvey. You good? What? What'd you call me? I don't know. I haven't been named. <laughs> Might come out in the second lot. So, how cool is this dogfighter? It's pretty cool. Now, I'm just doing these up across the bulkhead nice and gently. Mm. I'm not doing them up tight. I am putting a little bit of Loctite on there. Mm. Now, I do have my Loctite, just a little puddle on my bench. You know. Yeah, you just get the, uh, the thread of the screw in there, right? Yeah, that's it. And that will last me the whole build. Mm. Come back tomorrow. How good are these silicon pit mats? Big fan mm. working on these Definitely. nice and quiet stuff doesn't bounce too much we've been using these for years and they clean up well mm. you just need to give it a good rub and you know i, I saw you giving it a good rub before i'd love giving it a good rub don't you i'm just going to go along now and talk these up yeah look at it it's already starting to look like a super dog fighter now where did, what did you do with the spine have you got that over there yeah i've been waiting for you to give me some parts oh so we need look at that these bits we got the lay shaft the motor mount and the front and rear bulkheads on yep yeah 
All right, so you got those uprights. Yep. So I've got to go Screw. back to the original. So we can throw this away now. So what's that? that no, you can't throw it away yet. We're still using it. So this screw here, yep. it's three by eight. So a three by eight. I've run out of three by eight here. Have you got a three by eight? Three by eight. Three by eight can suck. Three by eight. Are they three by eight? Yeah. That's three by tens. Is there more in the parts bag? Have a look in parts bag number one. Number one? My parts, man. I don't have parts bag number one. It's already been opened. Because initially it said 3 by 10s here. And it changed it to 3 by 8s here. Maybe they didn't give us the new screws. Don't know. Well, how about you just take the, the ones out of here, we'll use them. We're just throwing some 3 by 10s for the moment because they're sitting here. Alright, give them to me. Let's see if they've tapped far enough. Will only be a problem if they haven't tapped far enough. Jeez, it's going together nice. Is it, is it in? No. It's not going far enough? They haven't tapped far enough. Okay. So, what about... We so, how about we use a 3 by 10 And the other things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that might not have been tapped far enough either. Because it's going to screw into this. Do you know what the problem is here? Oh, it goes all the way through. Yeah. Is that, let's, let's just use it anyway. I've gone along and opened all the bags up. Like a heathen. What, in the opening, in the... Unboxing. Unboxing, yeah. If anybody's seen that, it was a bit wild. Well, that's, that's the way you are. You're a bit of a wild man, aren't you? Okay. Putting on the bracket. Which side does the flat go on the front? Let's have a look. So... Is it on it the driver's like side or the passenger side? It goes side? like this. On the passenger side. Okay, so there's going to be a screw and a nut. So the flat bit... These right? are all button head, right? They're all button head. The flat bit is going... Button head. Button head 3x10. It looks like a button head 3x10. No, that's a 3x8. There's a 3x10 right there. You're really getting muddled up with your screw sizes. I don't blame you. What do you got in there? Three by tens. Yeah. Any old way. They said that's correct. Three by tens. They said that's correct. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm glad they said it's correct because. So can you get to that hole once that bracket's in? Yeah. Okay. Of course I can. You think they didn't think of that? Oh, I don't know. Just being thorough. I'm not allowed to be thorough. No. No? What about the screws here? So, which ones? Oh, those ones. So you use the same screws. Through by tens? I'll just get them myself. Up through the bottom? Um, um, you're meant to be here directing me and guiding me and holding my hand through this and I feel... Yeah, I'm trying just, to work to Google. I feel that you're just letting me run wild. You prefer that anyway, don't you? Well, a little bit. Gonna need another square to blow. Oh, you need more? Yeah, I didn't realise that it was going to be so loctitable. Loctitable? Well, all the modern kits are so much plastic into, uh, metal into plastic, Yes, no? yes. True. And it is really an old way of constructing, and mm. I love it. But like I said, and because I'm using Loctite, it's meaning that I'm not going to have to torque everything up ridiculously. No. And it's not going to rattle loose. Okay, so we've got this. This will sit. This Along side. there. Like that. Is, that. is that flush with here? Flush. No, so it'll be the other way. What do you mean the other way? Yeah, through here. Oh, you're an animal. You can't, it's got a flat on it. What do you mean it's got a flat on it? I told you it's got a flat on it. Oh. That's easy enough to fix, isn't it? <laughs> I didn't hear you say the flat. It's the other way around. I didn't hear me say that. You probably didn't because I didn't say it. I said which it. side you want the flat to face. Oh, is that what you said? The driver oh. or the passenger side? Is that what we said? I didn't hear any of that. And you said the driver's side. I Did said radio. Right. Okay. With my apologies. I have that. I this have is going to be a long night, isn't it? A little bit. It could be morning. Wherever you're watching this, you can't get it any more wrong than we've got so far. But we're having fun, <laughs> aren't we? <laughs> we are. We are indeed. We are indeed. Nobody's going to want to buy this after we finish with it. Why not? Because we're going to do triples with it. 
We're going to do the triples. Everything. No? Oh, yeah. It's going to be a little race hound. Race hound. What are we going to fit it out with? Probably an Orca 17.5, I think. Five and a half turn. No. Come on. That will destroy it in every They do way. have a recommendation, I think it's a 17 and a half. Oh, that's it's probably that period correct sort of speed, yeah? Yeah, well maybe we should just put a nine step speed controller in it and the sealed 27 turn. Mm. The Esprit stock. Yeah, it's coming soon. Yeah? Yeah. Just because I like the pink sticker. It is cool. Isn't it? Mm. Okay. Oh, that's looking more like it. Well, is it? Yep. If I dummy this Which up now and then that. go... And then go, no, I meant so the other... It's eight. like a USB, it's got three sides, right? It's three by five. It's a three by five. That little one there. Yeah, but they've addended it to a three by eight. That button had three by eight. There's two by three by eight. Three by oh, ten, three by thing? eight. What's this thing? That's a countersunker. That's Got a tiny countersunker. Look at that. That's even going to work now. Is it in? Because this one here is countersunker. So this goes here. But it faces. Oh, the other way. No, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. It's this way. Like that. Okay, and then this long screw goes through here. With the nut on the back. With the nut on the back. We're going through. There you go. Luckily, I've got fingers of iron. Have you? Yeah. They call me Iron Fingers. Iron Fingers Brett. I'm still trying to work out where this tiny, tiny... It would be nice if they gave a five and a half mil spanner for this one, because that's exactly what you need. Ah. Oh. What are those spanners they gave you there? Five and four for the turnbuckles. Oh, is it? Alright, so that's on. The one we need... The one specialist tool that you required. So we need another three by six. Goes Which we'll come back to later. No, it's at the front here. Three by six? Yeah, this one. Because this is countersunk. Wait, is that countersunk? Yeah. Oh, is it? What do you mean? Have a look at the overhead. Zoom in, baby. Oh, three by eight here. Countersunk, it says. I don't even need the instructions. Well, there you go. And I'm doing it all nice and flat obviously because I don't want to induce any tweak in the chassis because the last thing we want is a tweaked dog fighter super dog fighter no tweak what was the wonder dog fighter that was a chain drive jobby right that's it look we got there beach didn't your, we your misguided screwing has yes. been okay all right okay so this is step one just got, bag, a got, a sweaty, one. got sweaty little fingerprints all over it haven't you there you go I don't like the way that that's um, lined up, to be honest. There you go. Hmm. There we go. Spine attached. Spineage. Got sweaty little fingerprints. Haven't you? Okay, so we're on to bag two now. Got pink wheels. It's my favourite bit. Right, so bag two, this is something that you've attacked as well. So is it? Been so it's been opened up. Don't blame me for the screw count. All right. Alright, so we've got our spur and our slipper arrangement. Hush puppies. Alright, so there's your lay shaft. That's all brand new. Yep. Okay, so there's your lay shaft. We've got a drive pin in here. And we've got our pulleys. Now these pulleys look like Delrin, Delrin type or nylon type. They look beautiful, don't they? Okay, so you've got your, your slipper pads. And these slipper pads are from which car? These are the current uh, YZ2. Yeah. Bearings. Okay, so we've got a pin. I need a pin, please. Pinage. Pinage, and then you've got a pulley. Pulley will lock that in place. Oh, that fits nice. And then you've got... Pulley guide. That's it. That is nice. Okay, then you've got a bearing. Flange. Flange. Facing this way. That's it. Yep. Next step. 
Next step is where are the plates? Are the plates here? Oh, the plates are here. Got a slipper. Don't we have to put more? Well, there's another pin. That's right. And then <laughs> there's we'll put another pulley. We'll put these pulleys too. Yep. So we'll make it front and rear wheel drive. That's it. You're trying to build a rear wheel drive. Yep. Got it locked in there. There we go. And there's your end. Look at that. There's your pad. And that's going to go something like that. Is there another bearing? It's going to be a bit wobbly. There will be at the okay. end. Yep. The other bearing, I think, is in another bag. Slipper okay. pad. Sli slipper pad. So you probably want to stick those in there. We'll stack it like a sandwich. Give us the other one first. Hey? Yeah, give us that one. In case it falls out. Sometimes you can glue them in or scuff them up. Not too fast. Well, you're going like, to have to push it on carefully. It's not really a competition machine, is it? Just want to make sure the hexes, like well, you see how it's popped out. Just make sure Poppage. Got it in there? Like so, you can, in fact, put a drop of CA on it. Or if you hold it together, you sandwich it like if that. If you hold it together, yep. and poke your tongue out at the right angle. Do you often hold it together? Never. There you go. You can't There's hold me together. Plate. Oh, you know it's going to look cool? The optional vented one. Is it an optional vented one? Yeah. Optional vented one off the YZ2, but Slavin's got one already on there order. There you go. Is there you another collar on there? No. No collar? No. What do you mean? No Put collar. Straight on the spring? Straight on the spring. Wow. Wow. I am befuddled. Now you're going to have to have really strong fingers hold that in place. Why? Because you tighten it up. No, it's because your, your left shaft's going to want to it's only a spin. It's only a nylock. Yeah. You got strong fingers. Probably not that strong. You need something to hold in place? Because that's going to want to spin. It's going to want to spin, spin. Mmm. Going to use a Nan's favourite rat. Nan's favourite tea towel. Yeah. Give you a bit of grip. Give me a bit of grip and let's Oh, there slip. you go. You're in. You're in. Just make sure all the slip pads are still aligned. Yeah, they're all good. Oh, there you go. So there's a lay shaft. I think the slipper might be a bit loose. Yeah, it would be. What do you mean it would be? Well, it's slipping. Bit loosey goosey. And the main reason you, I'm going to over tighten it. Because normally we do, right? Because you over tighten it to 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 bed in the and, spring and then back it off. Yeah. And this is going to be by no means adjusting the slipper but it's going to give us a start point that we're not going to pull the trigger and glaze glaze up the um the pads the slipper pads straight away there we All go right. look at that lay shaft done we have two pulleys front and rear pulley there we go okay which means we get can into... i please have the rear bearing no i'm not allowed to put it on yet no they don't give it to you yet okay we're going on to the diffs is this bag three bag three bag, bag three, three. All right, I'm going right. to put the chassis over here because it looks pretty. Looks pretty. Ah. Yeah. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not winning. It this. didn't work out, did it? No. Nah. All right, we can sit there. That looks pretty for me. All right, okay. All right, let's get these diffages, all the bits. Have you built a diff lately? Uh, we did the, um, the RS ones, right? No, they were pre-assembled. Were they? Yep. Oh. I'm going ahead and opening these bags because I'm tipping that we're needing them. Well, we're going to need everything, I think. So okay, I'm so opening got it up. Outdrives and bearings. Now I've got some really skinny little shims over here and some paper gaskets, some skinny O-rings and some big O-rings. Oh, is this open yet? No. Or what are our little spider gears here? Do you know where they? Why call are they calling spider gears? Because they have six teeth. They have what? Six teeth. Oh, did. Do monk what? Do spiders have six teeth? Yeah. I was thinking it was spider monkey then, I don't know why. Really? I like spider monkeys. No monkey, no spider for you. Alright, so a little plastic. You want to be careful with these. With what? These paper gaskets at all costs. And you want to make sure, I'm going to drill it into people, you do not want to be getting diff fluid into the, the holes in the diff case where the screw goes. 
Oh wow, look at all these little shims. These are for the bevels and the out drives. Okay. All right, you ready to go? Give it to me. Now I have bought some rubber grease to the party because I'm tipping that there's some O-rings. And I've got my nine steps gizmo. What's a gizmo you ask? A beautiful little plastic tool here. Multi-purpose. Really Multi-purpose, good for anything. Okay, so we need to start off with an outdrive. And on yep. the outdrive, you've got a five mil shim. Do we not have a bearing first? The does bearing it, the bearing is slide on here, right? Does the bearing go on last, does it? Well, it does say yeah. put on the bearing now. Okay. But yeah, I guess no, it doesn't really matter, does it? Well, sometimes they don't go over the outdrive. Oh, really? But they okay. do. They do in this case. So well, let's put one anyway. All right, so there's one ready for you. So that's the case? Yes. Okay, so on the that's outdrive, we bearing. have in fact got the little small shim. Yep. Is it? Small shim. Yep. And then the O-ring, thin O-ring. The black O-ring, this yep. one here. And I'm going to go ahead, before I put that in the case, and that's to keep dirt out, I'm going to put a little bit of rubber grease on the outdrive. Okay. Are you happy with that? Mm, I'm happy with that. Now, can I push it into the case? Yes. And then you have the 5 mil O-ring. Yep. So Which I'm, is... I'm going to plunge that into... Is that the bigger one? Yeah, that's, that's a chunky one. one. Yeah. I'm going to plunge it into... So here. that's your rubber grease? Yeah. And the best way to get these settled, like I said, I don't like using sharp tools around my O-rings is actually to get your clean... Which yeah, one? was it? Oh, one of those? Yeah, one of these. Just push it in evenly all around? Yeah. And it's a five and a half mil driver. You just want to make sure that you haven't been using it on other stuff and it's all dirty. Yep. And then you've got your big shim goes on. Big shim? That's to help create That's a little shim. one. Oh, this shim? Yep, big shim. Really? Yep. Big shim? Jeez, big shim. They're way, way for thin, Beach. Yep. And then the pin goes through. I'm just locating it again with my five and a half mil. Pin through the, uh, the drive cup. Yep. Now, is there a particular method that it's saying to locate the pin? No. So I reckon if you use your noodle nose pliers... I'm going to have to, aren't I? Sort of manipulate it. Yep. I've got my favourite little green... Lines. So if we look at this, so the, the, the lines in the cup for the dog bone is the same as the direction of the, the pinholes. So if you can feel that through the bottom, you get an indication of where they are. Sort of there. Just a little bit of deli. De de delicacy? Delicate, yeah. These things are always a lot trickier to do on camera than you realise. Because I guess sometimes the O-rings, they may need to be compressed slightly for the fit in, right? And you just want to do it with a certain amount of feel. You don't want to be using any heavy duty tools. Because mm. these that was your market. These O-rings are very delicate. How is it? Are you in? I'm halfway in. I'm so it's just, just a matter of getting it through the other, other hole, right? Yeah, and then getting it central in the drive pin. Yeah. And the reason that I did... Man! You don't! Is that in? Yeah. Let's have a closer look. Have a Get in macro while I do this one. You can tell people all about it. So there you go. So we've got the pin in there. It's just sitting on top of that big shim. Now that... that Grease you can see, that's the rubber grease that we've used for... Do you call it rubber grease? Yeah, just for the assembly. So that's for the O-rings? And so that, got helps, that, on both sides. that helps generate a seal. Yep. And also protect the O-rings from the silicon oil itself. Yep. Because silicon O-rings and... They'll expand, fact, won't they? Yeah, they'll expand, they'll... Okay, so the next step is we're going to get the bevel. So it's going to be the big bevel like that. That's going to go into there. And the other thing is, is that the O-ring grease is really safe and compatible with your, your diff oil. So you're doing exactly the same thing with the other diff now? Yeah. Do you want me to drop in this, um, this big bevel? Yeah, why not? And then... I'm just going a little bit rogue here. I'm just doing the other one the same. I can't really see what I'm doing. There we go. Actually, this is falling in. There we go. 
people I would, in there. Would, nothing would surprise me with you. Well, of things falling in. Yeah, now you just want to be careful when you're doing these pins as well, just to make sure that everything's lined up. Mm. And it looks like we're working in a really well-lit environment, but there is actually a lot of shadows going on from all the bright lights. Shadows. I'll be interested when we get up to this um, stage with the spider gears. Do you have a particular technique you like to put on the spider gears? In so on, like on these shafts, I like to put a little bit of grease on the shafts before I slide the, the spider gear on. Really? Grease? But, oh, actually, not grease, because this, this is silicon. This is... It's a fully submerged silicon diff. That's right. So I won't be doing that. But say you were doing an open diff, I would put some grease on there before I slide on the, uh, the spider gears. You would. I reckon you're the kind of person that would do that. Just so you could get some lubrication on spider gears on the inside. That definitely would not hurt. But yeah, as you say, this is going to be a sealed... Um, Fluid filled. That's it. And it's going to have 5,000 weight as the packet, but I'm not going to use the Yokomo oil because I want good oil in there. Not that Yokomo oil is bad, but I want to use nine steps. Hmm. So do you want me to start assembling these and drop them in? Yeah, absolutely, my man. I want you to do that. That would be fantastic. All right, so I'm going to start. What happens on the other up? side? What other side? Oh, we're just going to fill oh, it. Now, do we have to weigh them? Oh, this will be an interesting point because a lot of, the, a lot of the precision diffs that we do with Yokomo, they're weighed. It says stick in the 5,000 oil and that's it. Doesn't it say a fill point? No. Oh, this is something that you really have to be quite, quite critical on is the fill point. Because you don't want to overfill them. No. You don't want a hydraulic lock. And you don't want to get oil everywhere if you can help it on these no, belts right. and everything. Pass us the 5,000 weight. 5,000. It almost sounds comical, doesn't it? There you go. It says 5, to put the of, the of the nine steps oil. Look yeah. at that. How good is that? It's beautiful. I love these bottles. And it's the same weight front and rear. I tend to think that we'd probably... I'm just putting it in the cross pins first. don't know if you can see that over here. I'm going to drop it in. If I drop this one in there. I just like to put a little bit of oil at a time, build it like a sandwich. Sandwich? Yep. Is that how you build your sandwiches? Yep. One layer at a time. That Why way. is it that sandwiches always taste better when somebody else makes them? Oh, I don't know. It's universal, isn't it? It's like coffee. It's one, of, it's one of those, those, I don't know, mysteries of... Life? Yeah. We're asking all the hard questions here at Hearns. Aren't we? We're building super dogfighters. Yep. Asking the hard questions. That's it. There you go. Got those cross pins there. If you're building toy cars, I think your life's pretty good, huh? Not too much to moan about. Oh, it's not bad, is it? Doesn't matter that it's 3 a.m. in the morning. 3 no. a.m.? Is that what you're doing? Some way. There we go. Okay, so I've got your little spider gears. They're all ready to is drop in. Is there no shims or anything behind the spider gears? Nope. I've done the page before. Sorry, doctor. No, nothing there. There's no shims behind or... No, no, straight in. Straight in. Straight in, right okay. here. Yeah. You sure? Yep, pretty sure, you saw. Oh, they, they locate really nicely in those diff housing, which is good. And then you'll notice on the outer diff casing, mm -hmm. they use these legs to hold the cross pins in yep. to its locator. So you just want to drop it in, locate it, and you don't want to be twirling the diff gears around because you don't want to introduce a load of air into the fluid, mm. but you do want to just give it like a little eighth of a turn and make sure all the gear teeth have seated. And in that case they have. And again, I'm going to go ahead and put another lot of oil. Mm -hmm. And as a rule of thumb, if it doesn't give a weight or a specification where to fill it up, you probably just want to cover the cross pins, I dare say. Because once the bigger bevel like this goes in, it's going to be displacing some more fluid, right? That's right. Okay, so up to the cross pins it is at the moment? Yep, just up to the cross pins I think is a very good general rule. Now you've done this one for me as well. Mm -hmm. So you can drop that in. And you put that in the casing just from the top here, straight in. Now you so see it people an idea. just sits on top there. You shouldn't so have to use there. any heavy duty tools and by getting it sat in 
And I don't know, we could be doing this wrong because we've never, either of us have ever built one of these. It's brand new. Well, we'll work it out when we'll screw it all together. And sometimes things are, like I said, this is the type of car, all off-road cars particularly, that after the first day at the track, mm. you always strip it and give it a good rebuild. Things yes. always run in, bed in. And you know how you're talking about these square um, locators? Yeah. The great thing about them too is it helps you locate the, the screw holes. There's some yes. of those other discs which are totally circular and you have to rotate it to try to find the holes. It's that, true, I've come across that. That's awkward. Now with the... Um, BJ has trouble finding his holes. Yeah. I wouldn't be the only person. Mm. Mm. I'm just going to leave that one there. Now the reason that I've filled these up now, I'm going to set these to the side. Let it settle? I like to drop the gears in now. Yeah. I like to drop the gears in now. What do you think? Because when you offer it up, you can line it up with the pins if you line it up across yes. where the cross pins go. Yes. And you don't have to worry about it coming down to mesh or being crooked. Yeah. You can get it without trying to pull it up and do it. You can just do it with your hands. Mm hmm like I said, I'm just rocking the tooth mesh, making sure everything's in there, mm -hmm. which it is. So, and then I'm going to line up that pin as a reference point for when I drop that case on. Yeah. Like you said, the out drive is up and down. Mm. So it's absolutely 180 degrees. Yeah. With the pin. And I might just put another little drop of oil. Just, just across in, there? Just in the back there. Yep. Yeah? Yep. So okay. that is def numero uno. Do the same thing here. I'm just going to offer this gear up and get the teeth meshed. Yes. Mesh a schmidt. Get it. Just by rocking it gently, not introducing any air. Again, making sure these tiny little screw holes, you do not get 5,000 weight oil in there. Because. No. Otherwise, once you tighten it up. It's going to lock up, isn't it? That's right. And there's a secret little cheat you can do if you're really worried or changing defoils a lot. Mm. You can, in fact, drill through the case yeah. with a really small drill bit. So you've got an escape you got an escape. So if you do put oil down there and you're in a hurry, it will just squeeze it out the back. Yeah. But it's just a mess. If you pay attention and stuff, you shouldn't be mm. a big problem. Again, just a little bit of drop of oil in the back here. And if we weighed those now, I'll get these bearings and I'll put them on the caps here. If you weighed those now, they should both weigh like exactly the same. Mm, we can tell which want, one's right? got more, but we're doing front and rear, so it doesn't really matter if they feel different. Okay, so I just pressed in the bearings I think here. in the world of setup, you would generally run a heavier front diff mm. in one of these. Yep. But tuning... Well, that's something you can tune later, right? That's right. We're so just getting it together first. going to go ahead now and build this side. So this will be built exactly the same as the, uh, the so diff end. We put so we're the, doing the pulley end The down. little shim. We put the little O-ring. Yep. We put a little bit of rubber grease. Yep. Just to help it all seat and get a seal. Mm-hmm. Through, through the case. Now you have put the bearing on, which is good. Yes. Like I said, this bearing looks like it does slide over the outdrive, but there's diffs which don't. Mm. Especially in some uh, eight scale applications. Yep. And now we've got the, uh, the big shim. Oh, sorry, the big O-ring and then the big shim. Big O-ring. And like I said, I don't like to use hex heads or hobby knives and stuff around O-rings. Go ahead here. Yeah, you don't want them tearing or getting any marks on them, do you? That's right. Pressing it down nice and square in the housing. Yep. Go ahead now. Put on my shim. Mm -hmm. And this is going to all help it beautifully seal. And then you're going to have a... Drive pin. pin. Well, actually, it looks like um, this needs to... Oh, hang on. What? No, no. No, no? No, no. Don't worry about me. No, no, chicken. No. Oh! Could do with some fried chicken. You like fried chicken, don't you? I'm not sure. Only if it comes in a bucket. Oh, the bucket. No? The bucket. BJ's on a bucket frenzy. I've never had a bucket, you see. And the times when I've tried, 
No, we run out of buckets. No bucket for you. And chicken in boxes is not the same. I beg to differ. You reckon? No, you got to have that bucket because after you finish a chicken, you got to be able to wear the bucket and then be able to put it around the house. I very often as an accessory. Around the house as an accessory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bit of decor. My wife would probably not let that happen. No? Have if you I, tried? If I use the, the chicken bucket as a lampshade, yeah. I think I would get told that that's uh, what's, what, what's not wrong? not happening. Not You're happening. Red in the white. <laughs> that could oh. be a thing. Give little stripes across the walls. I need to do a nine steps bucket. What? To appease you. Oh, I don't know if that's going to be the same. Well, How about we try it first? All right. And give a, an appraisal. Coming over. So you're doing exactly the same thing? Yep. Feels like there's a bit of a burr on this one, I have to say. Oh, it's gone now. Is it right? Yep. There, there you go, you just cleared of, it out? Just a little bit of flashing in there. All right, so now we've got the O-ring and then the big shimmage. And this should, this and the shocks, hopefully, should be the most tedious part of the build. Hmm. No, and that's why if we can get it done in the first video, yes, we are on fire for sure. Do, 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 do. But in like half an hour, hmm. I think we've achieved a lot. I think so too. Well, I mean, I have. What do you mean? I've been reading and everything and telling you the wrong you thing have. to do. That's all right. Let's keep been keeping you busy. And I'm doing things. But you know what? I've been getting familiar with it. There's nothing it's wrong. It's just, this. just an opportunity to make it better. That's looking all right, eh? Doesn't it look beautiful? Now this is, this is such a clever transmission system that they use this on so many subsequent models. They did, they use it for a good um, 10, 15 years, no? Mm. Built to the back, built to the front. Exactly the same pulley arrangement, front and rear. I do sort of wish though Mm. And I might be isolated. I do sort of wish that they did use ball diffs. I understand why they didn't. Mm. But I don't know. I do. Probably well, because I'd, I still use ball diffs in two wheel drive. I would suggest there'll be an option for ball diffs. I'm sure somebody will make them. Mm. There we go. I'm super happy with that beach. All right. All the meanwhile, our oil has been. Um, it's been settling. Been settling down. So if there's any air that's been in there, it's been yeah. slowly moving up and um, dispersing. Now, so you're putting on a little bit of rubber uh, grease another, on your Another on your tidbit is, yeah, and I'm not slathering it on, using it very liberally, yep. but this is all in the name of creating a better seal mm. and hopefully the, the gasket itself will be reusable next time that we uh, use it. Are they saying to put it down or put it in they're not saying anything but i suggest that putting in into the pulley side because it'll line it properly yep and it won't get sense. caught on the fingers that's right because you don't want it to accidentally get cut as you're screwing it up and because it's got the square fingers up here those locators it's going to locate that gasket perfectly with those little screw holes yeah now it's a bit of a mucky job but that's okay like i said there's not much grease on there no so I might just zoom in and show everyone what we've done here. Because it will create a better seal. And it should also... So there, there's a square locator is what we're talking about. And it should also keep it usable next time around. Now this rubber grease can go out of the way for a minute. So you're going to press this down any further? Yeah. So we'll get that like uh, I just honed want, in. I just want, oh, so you're I using just, the... I just wanted to do it evenly. Using a little gizmo thing, a blunt tool. Yeah, a little just press blunt it tool. Down. Just nice and evenly working my way around, getting it seated. Yep. On the gear, on the pulley. So I might just zoom in again and show everyone the difference between these two. So you see how this one's been seated now. All the way down flat. Just work your way around slowly. It is a very tight tolerance and you can, if you tear your little gasket, you'll be in a world of hurt. Yeah, you'll cry, no, won't you? No, because 
you can't really go much further in the build. You can hand cut them and stuff, but not tearing it is a good, really good policy. All right, so you're going to need screws for those. So they're right here. Over here. And they're not self tappers, these are machine style screws. Okay, and they use a one and a half mil hex. So let's just put those over here. Put these ones over here. Fridge diff. All right. You can see here, I'm just lining up the pin, making sure it is in the center of the shim. So that's been lined up like this, that particular pin. And also center ways that it lines into the gear. Yes. Now, hopefully, if I've done not a too bad job, it should just slot together. Yeah. It should, but you don't want to force it, but it will be tight at the same time. I think that's in. And if it doesn't go in, and if it's sitting crooked, yep. this is when you want to stop and reevaluate. You don't yep. want to start pulling it up with the screws. No, because you'll break it. Because you will break it, damage yep. your case. Yes. Now, no oil has gone into the screw holes, I can see that. And yep. I'm just going to, like I said, rock the gears. And I've got perfect mesh. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and do it up. And tighten it up. Yep. Now, the main reason I want to get these screws in there real quickly right. is in case I did overfill it, avoid any oil that is about to be bled out mm. actually bled into my screw holes. And I know I'll go on about it, but look how small they are. They're like a two mil thread. Yes. And you have to treat them um, very, very delicately. Yep. You need to give make them a bit of care, a make, little bit of love. Make sure you're not uh, cross threading it. Make sure they're going in nice and straight. Mm. Make sure you're using a good tool. Like I said, the traces of rubber grease will be doing a world of good. So you're only screwing these in a little bit? Just, oh, just a little just, bit. I'm just, just starting the, the thread, thread and basically yep. blocking the holes from any fluid yep. from thinking about going in there. Don't think about it. No, nah, don't even get, don't even be tempted. No. And then I'm just going to have a look at it, make my way around and make sure they are all sitting flat, mm. not cross threaded or crooked. Yep. And then I'm going to go ahead and work my way around. So I'm just going to seat them. I'm not going to definitely not going to do them up tight just until the countersunk is just touching. Face is touching. Yeah. And then you can talk. And ev up. even if it's not touching, that's fine. But get it all the way sort of down because yep. they are quite long. Mm. Um, because they do, I suppose, not want it to come out. Mm. But they shouldn't. And being so long as well gives you lots of strength in the, the threads. Yes. Meaning that A, they're not going to rattle out, and B, you don't have to do them tight. The original diffs would have been all alloy, I imagine. Mm. Yeah, with like a ball diff. Yes, yes. So I can just feel it now taking up, and I'm working across. They're quite heavy too, no, like all steel. Really? Mm. And you do not want to strip these threads so when you think they're tight probably back them off half a turn and then tighten them again just to make sure that you're not just cutting a thread mm. that you are in fact tightening the face a lot of people will over tighten these I can see that straight away well having such small threads when you strip them it's a bit hard to tell until they start feeling loose right that's right but they do give quite a positive locking feel. So you're feeling enough resistance yeah. to stop it? Yeah. Because once you strip these, you've definitely lost all torque. They won't come out, but they'll definitely leak. Mm. Just work my way around again. Yeah. Loosen it off, tighten it. Yeah. It's good to be sure. Do it slowly. That's right. Loosen it off, tighten it. If you just keep tightening it, you'll just strip it. Hmm. Loosen it off, tighten it. Because we're doing two things. We're cutting a thread yes. into the plastic yes. and talking down the screw. Last one. These nine step tool is amazing, by the way. Have I told you? Oh, I've once like or twice. Told you lately that I love you. I shouldn't sing. You I should not sing. Why not? I'm going to give this a little bit of wipe over because I've got my greasy little mitts all over it. I'm going to show everyone what it looks like. 
You show everyone what it looks like. There you go. You I'm going to get to work on this one. Black on black, you can't see anything, right? So let's get in really tight. What did you just call me? I didn't say anything. What are you talking about? All right, so there we go. So that's the face where we've screwed it in. There's a the pulley itself, and there's the, the diff housing. And then you can feel it, there's quite a bit of resistance. Yeah, well, it's fluid filled. Mm. And 5,000 weight is no laughing matter. Can I put it in the chassis? I would. I'm gonna get really excited because the next step is gonna be, hopefully, bearings. Oh, look at that. And center caps. It's in. What's the next step? Go the next step. Next step is actually mounting these with the, the belts. You wanna okay. do that? No, I think we'll stop there. I think that's enough for people. We don't want to spoil them, do no. we? No. How far into the build would you say we are? We, oh, I don't know. 20%? We're in page seven. What step? So next step is going to be bag four. Bag four? Mm. So step four. Look at that. All right, so that's on the front. And on the back, I'm glad we put around. that second pulley on the lay shaft. There we go. How nice is that? Geez, it gives a funny sound, doesn't it, into the into the cast? Yeah, because it's echoing. Well, the outer race will actually be slipping a bit too because it's not clamped down by the bulkhead. Well, you can already hear it, right? Yeah. Because the top bulkhead actually clamps down on it. Mm. Bulkhead? Retainer? I don't know what you call it. Just going around here. I'm not rushing. You can't rush me do this. These are two mil screws. Do not strip these screws did you say you're russian i can't say that i'm gonna put that in our safety box this is nice i should hope so it's japanese finest manufacturer look at, that. Look at this what am i looking at i don't know just in general just look at it mm. just, just soak it up beach get, <laughs> get amongst it and we're going to call this part one done mm. aren't we mm. I'm going to go ahead with part two, but the other people are going to have to watch it separately. <laughs> Don't tell them. Of course not. There you go. I wonder how many times I've done these screws now. I do like how it's been chamfered here. Chamfered. I just like the way you say chamfered. That was, that was quite a bit of work, you know, getting a file in there. Make it nice and even. Hmm. That's basically get enough droop. Droop? For your um, suspension arms. Oh, well, you've got plenty of droop now, haven't you? Plenty. So here you see the difference in the rear bulkhead as well because this has got um, anti-squat. Where is my blue tack? So what I'm going to do here before I finish off these diffs is I've got my blue tack, my favourite cleaning putty in the world. And it's just going and, to like. And I am going to run oh, it around. Let me this one out for you. I'm going to run it around the pulley to ensure that I don't have any silicon oil there because if you do, it will be shiny. Okay. And the Bluetech pulls it all off? It pulls off or displaces it, at okay. the very least. Yep, yep. Um, because if it does have silicon, you really want to get on top of it now before you assemble it. Once you get that on your belt, yep. it's going to attract all the dirt in the world, mm. and you're going to have a world of problem in mm. your off-road buggy. Oh, this is going to grind, with, isn't it? With greasy, mucky belts. Mm. So I've got to keep it beautifully clean. In the old days, you, you used to make um, all sorts of lubricants and stuff. And they, they still do. They had a belt, belt lubricant. Really? Mm. Was it like a graphite, like a powder? I can't remember. I think it was like a white stuff. Must have been like a Teflon powder. Mm. All right. There we go. That has been part one. Where's my box lid? There you, go. you know I can't do this without my box lid. Well, I've got the chassis here. Got to sign out. We do, don't we? All right, this is where we've gotten to with our first part of the Yokomo 870C Super Dogfighter build. Absolutely. I hope so, you've enjoyed that gifts. part one build. Keep an eye out for part two. Yes. And I look forward to seeing it come along. I, I'm looking forward to, to going on to building more. I'm Brett from Hearns. I'm BJ. And thanks for watching. Thank you.